What's up guys, this is Adrian with Scrape Creators and today I'm gonna to show you how I scraped 1 million companies off of PitchBook. So let's get right into it. So this is PitchBook, it has a lot of nice data. This is obviously Shopify on PitchBook and you can see like it doesn't have a lot of juicy information because they yeah, obviously put some of it in front of the paywall or behind the paywall, but not bad. Yeah, if you can see all of this information here, yeah, not bad at all. Blah, 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 FAQs. And maybe the most important is this stuff right here because you can see what vertical they're in and then the website. So from that, you can get the emails from the website. Uh, so you can filter by what the vertical is and yeah, have a nice little lead list. So how you initially find all of these URLs, because you can see the URL structure here is pitchbook.com, profiles, company, and then some ID right here. So they're using all of these companies as like programmatic SEO. So if we go to another one, like PitchBook Asana, then you'll see Asana's is right here also. And you can see the URL structure is, yeah, identical, except for the ID, obviously. So yeah, they're using programmatic SEO to just display a ton of these. And how you can find all of those URLs is you go to uh, PitchBook Sitemap, and then I think it's this one right here. So then you'll see a bunch of these different things. And what we're looking for is, yeah, public profiles, which it has a ton of. So if we just go to the first one here, and then it's going to just automatically like download. Oh, and then if you want to see what's going on in the database, check this out, boom, boom, boom. This is all of the records that I have for PitchBook. Some of them didn't scrape, so I just have the URL, so I need to go rescrape those. But yeah, as you can see right there, there's over a million and a bunch of good stuff there. So let's go back to the sitemap or the, um, this is a XML. So we're going to open with, open with cursor. You can open with any code editor you would like. Then you can see that, oh, they have all of the URLs right here. So this is for, you know, you can see the same structure exists right here that we saw for this other two. And then we even get more. Well, let's just go to this first one and we can see that it's read exhibitions, whatever that is. And you can see the vertical is TMT, whatever that is. So we have all of that information. Now we even get like person information. So Torsten Goleski. And you can see all of this nice information here. Oh, you, I think you even get their LinkedIn, which is kind of nice too. So yeah, get their LinkedIn. And then it's somewhere there's like investors on it. Yeah, investor. So you get a lot of good information, person, company. So we have MIT Venture Mentoring Service Overview. And then, yeah, you have a lot of good information there. You can see their investments, exits. Yeah, lots of good information. So how do you get this sitemap programmatically? Well, let me show you. So yeah, I do everything in Node.js and I think I just did this with cursor, just prompting an AI. So worst case scenario, you can just do that. I use these proxies called Evomi proxies, super amazing, very cheap, because you're probably going to have to use a proxy to get this information. Even the sitemap is behind some protection because obviously they know it's valuable and don't want you to have it that easily. And then I use this uh, this package, got scraping, so npm install, got dash scraping. And then we use all of these other packages that I don't really know what they are, but yeah, just use AI to assist you in that. And we have to do all, like all of this stuff, like fetch and decompress and all this junk. Um, yeah, if you want this code, I could probably just drop it in there for you. Uh, because yeah, it is uh, kind of a mess. Let's yeah. And then we convert XML to JSON somewhere. Anyway, eventually you're going to come out with stuff that looks like this, where we just are going to get the, uh, the URLs. So then the tough part is if we try to go to one of these incognito, I'll show you what happens if we do that. So if we go incognito, then yeah, so you're hit with the cloud flare right away, which is the hardest of the hard to get around. That's cloud flare, um, turnstile. So the way that I did it, which I would not recommend again, but if all else fails, like the, the best way that I found to get around Cloudflare turnstile is this thing called 
up a tier real browser. So this is obviously for Node.js devs only. I don't know what the uh, the Python devs use. And it's no longer receiving updates, but it is really, really good. So you can use this. And I found, so you need to use it in Docker. And I'll show you my Docker setup in just a second. And you need to use this with AWS EC2. And so I just use ChatGPT to help me upload this or uh, put this on EC2, a huge pain in the butt but it does work. And in order to scrape that many things, so in order to scrape 1 million records, then you need to run it concurrently. So I ran it concurrently like 50 times. So you have to have like 10 instances set up. So yeah, and it gets, so that gets really, really expensive. Let me show you my Docker setup for this. All right, this is the Docker file and it's pretty easy uh, ish. And I might put the, these, this exact, I just copy and paste this into the description of the video because this was a pain in the butt just to figure out what Docker file I should have. And it's not very much. So yeah, I might just put it down in the description, but yeah, this is the Docker file. So then yeah, to run all of the um, commands, then you need to do yeah all of this stuff. You can name this stuff, whatever you want. Um, just again, ask ChatGPT. I am not a Docker expert at all, but yeah, you should be able to just run this in Docker. And then it's just Puppeteer, so you just hit the URL. And then I don't know how to do, you can do to wait for something to show up. You can do a wait, you know, page for selector. I've never been able to get that to work. So I always just use timeouts. So in this case, you said, you know, wait six seconds to solve the uh, Cloudflare turnstile thing, and then just return the HTML. And so you're going to put that on EC2, and then you can call that from an endpoint. Um, so you can, yeah, just call that via HTTP request. So that's why we have this setup. Uh, so I just put a, this is an express server right here. Yeah. So we're just getting that information and then parsing all of the HTML once we have it. Uh, but yeah, that's the biggest thing. So if you don't want to use that, or if it's possible, then you could use the Wayback machine, but I swear that I tried this. And a lot of the companies weren't there. Like they were there once and then I checked again and then they were gone. So not sure what's going on, but if we try this one, then yeah, I don't know if it's a very reliable way to get the information because let's see what this one says. You know, it was indexed like once a year or maybe once a year. Don't know if it's very reliable. Yeah. So let's ch take a look at, uh, the differences. So yeah, this doesn't actually look bad. Yeah. So that one looks like we're missing this one right here, but Hey, I'll take that. Da, da, da. Yeah, so if it's possible, you could use that. And ChatGPT actually showed me a nice little API that you can use to find the latest snapshot or screenshot. And that is, yeah, so get latest snapshot from the Wayback Machine. And I don't think you need a proxy, but if you do use those Evomi proxies, but you just hit this URL. So slash Wayback slash available URL, and then the URL that we are looking for. So that's that uh, pitch book one. And yeah, key into it with this and then get back the URL, closest URL. And then you can parse the HTML that way. So as long as that's available, then you could do it. Let's try it with Shopify pitch book. Check out the Wayback Machine. So yeah, that might work. And even if all of them aren't there, if you could do it for some of them and then just do the rest with up to your real browser, that'll save you a lot of money. So yeah, you might actually want to just use the Wayback Machine, that would be a heck of a lot cheaper and faster to do and way less of a headache. So that's probably what I would do now. And then the rest, like just leave them or you could spin that up or you could use another service like Scraping Bee or Firecrawl or these yeah other services. So you don't have to spend that much money, but man, it's probably worth the money instead of the headache. So check that out. Um, also, if you're looking for scraping APIs for uh, social media, then check out my product, Scrape Creators. So we have, let's check out the documentation. We have APIs for all the social medias, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, even the ad libraries, Twitter, Reddit, even threads, uh, Truth Social, Pinterest, all that good stuff. So check that out and subscribe for more scraping tips. Thanks.